Typically, you would need a license to start using Microsoft Word. But in this video, I would like to show you an alternative way, which is actually better, has more benefits, and absolutely free. It used to be that the only way to get Microsoft Office was to download it onto your desktop, install it on your desktop, and enter the license key to activate it. And obviously, this is not the free way to do it. But there is a much better way to do it, which is absolutely free, and this is what I am going to show you in this video. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and Master's degree in Computer Science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant, helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. And now, let's get back to our original question. How do you get access to Microsoft Word for free? To do that, all you need to do is navigate to theoffice.com and create a free account. You might already have an account available to log in for free, as long as you have live.com, hotmail.com, or outlook.com accounts. Once you log in, you have access to all premium Microsoft applications that you used to pay for. All you need to have is the browser, and office.com applications work in any modern browser. Now, there is a slight catch here. Not all the capabilities available in the desktop version are available in the office.com, and the architecture is a little bit different. Let's look into this in more details. Let's look at how office.com is different from the typical office on the desktop. You see the desktop here on the picture and office installed as an application on the desktop. All documents are stored locally on the desktop. The desktop depicted here could be either desktop, laptop, or tablet, and it could run either Windows or Mac OS. When you use office.com, you need to have a computer that has internet connection. Office is installed in the cloud on the website office.com and documents are stored in the OneDrive, which is also in the cloud. You do need internet connection in this setup, but the huge advantage of this is that it's free. Another huge advantage of this setup is that because documents are in the cloud, multiple people can work on those documents at the same time. Now let's do a quick overview of what happens when you log in into office.com platform. First step, you need to navigate to office.com and sign in. You can sign in with your existing Microsoft account or you can create a new account. I am going to sign in with my existing account and then we will continue. On the front page of office.com, you see all office.com applications that are available. Most frequently used applications show right here on the screen. You can also click all apps icon to see additional application that's not available right away. In addition to typical Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and OneNote, you also see Calendar, Forms, OneDrive, Outlook, People, Power Automate, Skype, Sway, To Do, and some other applications. Typical browser navigation works, so at any time you can go back and you will see the home screen again. When you are not on the home screen, but you need to launch specific application, you can always use App Launcher. It's located in the upper left corner. When you click on the App Launcher, it shows all available applications, and you can also click All App to expand the menu selection. Here on the screen, you can see documents that you worked on recently. You can also see pinned documents, and you can see documents that have been shared with you. You can also upload and open any document from your desktop, and you can navigate to OneDrive account, which comes automatically with Office.com. To create a new document, you can either click Start New button, which shows all available options for new documents, or you can click on the application itself and it will create a blank document, or you can choose Document available for this particular application from the template. Are you still not convinced? Let me share with you a quick tutorial of Word Online application to demonstrate you that it's not much different. There are four different ways for you to start working on the Word document. You can use one of the recently created documents. You can click Start New and select Word Document. 
You can click on the Word application and it will launch brand new document. You just need to select new blank document. Or you can upload and open one of the existing documents from your desktop. For example, I have series of documents on the OneDrive for my practice labs, and I can upload and bring it up right into Word Online. I'm going to navigate back on the start page and start new Word Online document. By default, Word Online comes with the simplified ribbon. You can expand simplified ribbon and you will see familiar ribbon that you used to using traditional desktop based Microsoft Word. Let's do a quick overview of Microsoft Word user interface. Right now we are in the home tab, but we can navigate to file tab or we can navigate to the insert tab layout, references, review, view, and help tabs. Most of the important commands located in the home tab and 80% of the time you will spend working on the home tab. Icons on the tab are organized into groups. For example, you have a clipboard group that have cut, copy, and paste commands as well as the format painter command. You have font group, you have a paragraph group, you have styles group, editing, dictation, and editor. Each tab on the ribbon has its own set of groups. Just like in the regular Word document, you can just go ahead and start typing your text. Once you have entered your text, you can change the formatting of the text. For example, you can apply different styles, like heading one style. To do that, you just need to select the section for which you're trying to apply the style and click on the style button. You can also change font. You can change font appearance, for example, make it bold, italic, or underlined, or combination of bold, italic, and underlined. And you can access any command for the selected text on the ribbon itself or by doing right mouse click and you have access to commands that might be applicable to your selection. You have full access to clipboard commands. For example, you can select the text, click copy, and then paste the same text in a different area of the document. To make cut, copy, and paste work from the ribbon, you need to install Office copy and paste extensions. I'm gonna choose install. And once installation is complete, I can just click the paste button and it will work in a similar way. Access to keyboard shortcuts Control X, Control C, and Control V is available without doing any additional installations. To access to the header of the document, you need to navigate to upper right corner of the page and click on the header. In the header, you can type the date and the name of your document. To finish working on the header, you need to click on any area outside of the header. To access the footer, you need to click at the bottom right corner of the document. In the footer, you typically might want to insert the page number, the date, or any other information that you need. To insert page number, you need to navigate to Insert tab and select Page Number and select the location for the page number. And it will insert the number of the page right in the area where you want it. To stop working on the footer of the document, you need to click on any area outside of the footer. To insert the table, you need to navigate to Insert tab select insert table and select the area for the table that you're trying to insert. Then you need to navigate to the specific cell and just start typing. Once you have inserted all the values into the table and selected the table, you see that there are two new ribbon tabs that showed up, table design and table layout. These are table specific functions that only available when you have tables selected. For example, in table design, you can select different styles for your table. And you can switch between the styles without affecting the content of the table itself. In Table Layout tab, you have Select functions, Table Delete functions, Table Insert, Merge, and Align functions. You can also insert images in Microsoft Word Online. To insert the image, you need to put the cursor where you would like image to be inserted, click on the Insert tab, and if you click picture, it will let you download picture from your computer. Or if you click online pictures, you'll be able to search and find picture on the search engine. For example, we can picture of the airplane and insert it right into the Word Online document. When picture is inserted and selected, you have access to picture ribbon. On the picture ribbon, you can enter all text 
you can pick different picture styles, you can rotate the image, crop it, and change image size as necessary. As we added more information into the document, you see that the document became a two-page document, and some information shifted on the page two. You can control when page two starts by inserting a page break. To insert a page break, you need to navigate to Insert tab and select Page Break. And that inserts page break, and this is where the second page starts. By using page break, you have full control of where one page ends and another page starts. To give document a name, you need to click on the document title in the upper part of the screen. By default, Word Online saves all of your documents onto OneDrive. You do not need to specifically click the Save button or Save Menu item to save your document. All changes are saved automatically. But you can save document as by choosing Save As option and choosing different formats and different options available. To print your document, you need to click File and then Print. And it will bring up the Print dialog box from your browser. From here, you have different options of how you would like to print your document. You can print it into PDF, or you can choose one of the available printers to print it. You can also share your document with other people or embed this document into your blog post or website. And if you choose Save As option, you can download a copy of the document right onto your desktop and continue editing on the desktop version of Microsoft Word. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.